How we doing YouTubes? Time for a new deck tech. And this one, it's Prosper Tonebound. Why Prosper? Because he has become by far, oh look at this fancy jewelry. Prosper has become by far my favorite Rakdos commander because Wizards continues to print stuff that cares about you having treasures and or allows you to exile stuff and play it later on. And why is that important? In case you don't know, Prosper 1-4 with Death Touch that lets you exile a card at the end of your end step that you can then play till the end of your next turn. But more importantly says, whenever you play a card from exile, create a treasure, which is really nice because it includes lands and, well, spells, obviously. And we're going to try a new format where I just talk through the deck. So let me know in the comments if you enjoy this format, if this seems like a more enjoyable video. And I just want to try talking about a deck I've really enjoyed playing. Hopefully that helps resonate with you and you're like, you know what, I want to build this deck too. Or it has some similarities, some cards I need to try out. Awesome. Like that's the goal, right? Just sharing ideas on fun decks to build and then of course if you're gonna end up building it check out card kingdom use my affiliate link much appreciated like and subscribe all that good stuff okay let's just get right into it let's just run through the creatures right what are we doing creatures everything in the deck either helps with exiling and then playing stuff cares about treasures or them going to the graveyard or helps us make treasures some type of synergy around that and my decks are often just like value focused i'm not pushing for infinite combos or crazy powerful stuff i just like to do fun value focused things so some early cards disciple of the vault treasure goes in the graveyard ping an opponent great dockside shelf chef helps you have sack a thing draw a card makes sense goblin welder in the deck because i always like goblins but i have worm coil engine that i won and i had no other home for so the hope is play worm coil engine sack it bring it back just keep doing degenerate dumb things like that welcome goblin welder to the fray <laughs> Uh, new, moving on, Dream Devourer. This is a great card because it lets you foretell other spells in your hand. Foretell means you're then casting them from exile. Prosper says, hey, that was really cool. Here's a treasure. Neat. We did it. Jury. Jury is just going to get bigger every time treasures go to the graveyard. And then when they blow up, we're hitting hard. Kalein, just a nice makes a treasure, makes stuff come in with additional 1-1 one -one counters. If we use treasures, just a fun, high synergy kind of play. Reckless Fireweaver, another way to just paying opponents down when although this one does one damage to each opponent so definitely higher value for us than disciple of the vault but a way to keep everyone honest right no one can just get a little too comfortable have some people lose two three life in a turn it'll, it'll put them on notice plus it's a lightning rod to protect prosper i enjoy having other targets that opponents want to get rid of now of course everyone just plays board wipes but it's good to have removal where people are questioning what do i actually get rid of then we got valky and i just needed a deck for valky didn't have a home for him yes they exile a creature and but all we can really do is like turn him into that copy now the commander side is obnoxious and definitely a salty card which fits well with prosper and what they're trying to do it, it was honestly just an include because i needed to throw it in a deck academy manufacturer here's a card if you don't own a copy of you should probably need to buy one sooner than later assuming it doesn't get reprinted if it gets reprinted in Baldur's gate or like this year price will probably come down but it is creeping up because there's, again, just so much treasure creation out there. And creating additional tokens helps us trigger more of those artifact synergies or have artifacts to sacrifice. Just a really high synergy value play. Now, Burgi is just a nice kind of engine roller starter. You know, you have Prosper out, you start doing some things. And then every time you cast a spell, assuming it's from Exile, you get a treasure from Prosper and Burgi gives you an extra red. So she can help us get to our, let's just say, really fun spells. Oh, there's the microphone really fun spells before our opponents would expect or maybe ready for or they just don't know where our mana is getting into we're going to check out our our spells here in a second birdie just helps us get there a little earlier bray's apprentice is a nice card if you start to kind of flounder and bray is one of the i always like when you play a card like this where people are like i don't know what that card does perfect nailed it great captain lannery storm whenever she attacks create a treasure whenever you sack a treasure she gets bigger so she can be a threat at times you know especially if you're pinging your opponents down right and now an opponent is at sub 10 life captain landry storm she is going to be a problem then we got dual caster mage i don't know why other than if you just have like 15 mana at some point this and like an apex of power we're gonna have some fun okay that's the it's just the hope right it's the hope of what could be that's what dual caster mage is here for florian new card lets you exile some cards from the top of your library play one of those just gets you access to more cards find more things play stuff from exile great mayhem devil pinging stuff down nadir's nightblade Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, we get to drain our opponents for one. Pretty, gets obnoxious quick. Now, Nashi, we don't really have any great evasion, ev evasive creatures. We don't really have ways to ninjutsu this thing in. But you also got three opponents, right? And surely someone's floundering or you can just, you'll figure it out, right? And if you do figure it out, Nashi's going to make it worth your while. 
Welcome to Prosper. <laughs> Professional Face Breaker, just more awesome synergy. A card that's one of the few that's expensive from the old Streets of Nukapenna, but definitely makes sense in this deck. Skullport Merchant is a card I've liked. Uh, it feels clunkier than I thought it would. I just rarely find myself sacking another creature or treasure, so I may take this one out, especially with what we see in Baldur's Gate, but it's a solid three drop, decent blocker. They do the thing. Then Zorn. Zorn is by far one of the best creatures in the deck, making every treasure we make into an additional treasure. Not every, but whenever we make treasure tokens. So if we make two, it's three. If we make one, it's two. Just a lot of it, a lot of value. That uh, that artwork, which way are we pointing? This way. This, that artwork though, is terrible. And I would definitely not recommend buying that artwork. But even if you do, it still makes a cut because it's just such a powerful effect. Anger, give our stuff haste, which just helps with some of those tapping effects and whatnot. At Sushi. When you die, you make us treasures. Enough said. Or we can just exile cards. So both effects are important for us. And it's a flying sushi roll. So how could you say no to that? Hidatsugu, you help us exile and whatnot. So you also make the cut. Great. Ruthless Technomancer opened you in a set booster pack. And uh, you let us bring stuff back from the graveyard. Like Worm Coil Engine. We did it. We're back. Honestly, this card has a lot of potential. Could be used to greater effect than my build. But it's just a card I happen to have. And makes the cut there you go storm kiln artist easily one of the best creatures in the deck every time we're casting our copy spells creating treasures gets out of hand quick especially when you got zorn on the battlefield and you're playing stuff from exile with your commander out please your opponents are like that's a problem it's got to go you're right wildfire wild flower yeah wildflower devils the classic everyone knows it the four two it just another exile play something neat then there's Urbrask. Obvious. I actually don't own Urbrask. He is going to be in my next Card Kingdom order. 100% because I need a copy. And yeah. I don't even know what's in the deck in place of Urbrask. Probably just an extra land. But it's just a good card. Just, it's so good. Just like a Tali. Probably the best, like most win Connie creature in the whole deck. Marionette Master, though. I remember I bought a playset of these foil back in the day because I was like, I'm going to build a proper deck. And. Definitely overpaid for him, but she's here and she's the one that has won me more games than any other creature. Because now every treasure going to the graveyard drains an opponent for three life. Four life. That is, that's rough. That's rough. Big fan. Big fan of Marionette Master. And then last one, Worm Coil Engine. Again, uh, am I going to say you should go spend 23 bucks on this card? Nope. But if you need a deck to put one in, Prosper can make it work. Prosper can make anything work, though. That's why Prosper's awesome. All right, moving into the spells. Profane Tutor, I'm playing one tutor just because there's those games where you can't draw anything worth doing, even though we've got all this churning through our deck and whatnot, and it helps you eventually do the thing. But there's Profane Tutor for you. Dark Ritual helps you cheat your commander out. Lightning Bolt, I just think cards like this are slept out in commander, and I always play a Lightning Bolt in every red deck because there's plenty of games where it's like, if I could just bolt that thing or bolt my opponent, this whole game would be a lot easier. So I play a Lightning Bolt. Malakir Rebirth. Just an auto-include in most black decks where your commander's important. March of the Reckless Joy. March of Reckless Joy. Exile stuff. You can play up to two of those cards until your next turn. Just helps you get to cards you need. Deadly Dispute. Stupid expensive common, but very good if you got a copy to throw in here. Feed the Swarm Removal. Infernal Grasp Removal. Great, we're doing it. Rakdos Charm. My favorite way to win a game is Rakdos Charming the token deck. Where they're like, look at my 50, 50 50s with 50 flying counters and 50 tramples and 50 first strikes. And you're like, great, take 50. <laughs> Rakdos charm, baby. We did it. Okay, reckless impulse, exile stuff, terminate, removal. You find some prisoners. Another card that I just love. You can use it if you're like desperate just to hit land drops. You can exile top three cards from an opponent's library, play the land for turn, still get a treasure. It's just super flexible. Or if they tutored for something that you don't like and they put it on top, I think I found some prisoners. Mr. Person who just vampiric tutored that thing to the top of your deck. I'd love to see it. Thank you. Then you got Bedevil. More removal. Chaos Warp. Kinda removal. Yeah. Fire Covenant can turn into removal. Pearl Through Hell. Just an aggressive card. Exiles a creature that you can then play. That's not bad. And then here's one of the heavy hitters. Heavy hitters. Fevered Suspicion. The old... 8 mana, each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among those non-land cards without paying their mana costs. Not bad. Oh, and it has rebound. So you're playing all kinds of spells for free. And the fact that it mills, essentially mills them down to where you hit a non-land card, yes, it can whiff, but you got six chances to hit something spicy and they're all exiling and you're basically getting 
three of the mana back, so you get six of the mana back and the two casts of it. It's just really, it's just a really good card. Just solid. And for only like less than a buck, I think I bought the borderless version for $1.25. Two bucks. Yeah. Well worth it. Soulfire Eruption. Super fun card where you just exile all the things, blow up half of your opponent's board, do damage to your opponent directly. Just a really fun card to dump all your treasures into. Same with Apex of Power. Exile stuff does the thing. And these are cheap cards. I mean, if you guys need to find a way like, okay, I'm going to build a couple commander decks. What are my go-tos? I think Prosper is an easy budget build you can throw together. I mean, you just cut out stuff like you don't need Valky. You don't need Warm Coil Engine. What else? I mean, Professional Facebreaker, I think would be worth it because it's a card that's always good. Manufacturer is not even amazing in this deck. You don't need it. You could put this deck together with whatever cards you have in your collection, throw 20 bucks towards just some of the really high, high synergy plays, grab a couple soul rings and signets for your other decks and you're in business. Okay, moving on to the artifacts. Experimental Synthesizer, cheap synergy play, mana rock, mana rock, protection for commander, lightning greaves, love it. Only called Anvil. I mean, it's nothing special, but it makes the cut, makes sense in this deck. Mana rock, Swifties, treasure map. This is one, you know, if you're looking, hey, what five plus dollar card should I buy for this deck? I think treasure map is really good because scrying is always helpful, creating treasures, and then just turning treasures into potential card draw goes a long way in this deck. Really positive. Wish Claw Talisman. Oh, I guess I have another tutor, but Talisman I don't really include because you can, it's more of like a, a bartering politic piece, which I really enjoy. And Wish Claw Talisman is just always one of those cards that it's just fun. It always adds a spiciness to a game that I enjoy. Commander Sphere, another Mana Rock. Inspiring Statuary. This card's awesome, even though my friend Cody always has to remind me how to actually use it. This card is one that I've really, how much is this thing? Six bucks? Uh, that's probably worth it for this deck. I just had a copy because it was in the Marionette Master deck. This lets your treasures tap for colorless, so you don't have to sack them. So it really helps you cheat in or cheat out spells like Apex of Power, your big expensive heavy hitters, because all of your non-artifact spells have improvise, meaning your artifact can tap to pay for a colorless regardless of what it is. Like you can tap your, tap your Swifties to pay one colorless of a spell. Not bad. Non-artifact spell. So yeah, it just adds a lot of synergy to the treasures and stuff we're doing. And then we're going to move to the saltiest card in the deck, Uba Mask, which basically says whenever a player would draw a card, they exile it and they can only play it from exile this turn. So... We don't mind so much because we're always looking to play stuff from exile. Our opponents, not so much. So it's kind of like Urbrask on a stick, but a little more obnoxious. So I like it. <laughs> Bolus of Citadel is the next card where you probably have a copy of this from the War of the Spark Days or it's just hanging out and you're looking for a home for it. Prosper definitely gives you 10 non-line permanents you can sack to make each opponent lose 10 life. And then Summoning Stations, just a fun put tokens into play and then when ar ever an artifact is put in a graveyard you may untap so basically create a token sack a treasure create a token so on an end step you can make kind of an army o two twos, and that's not too shabby for three bucks it is seven mana a little pricey but with prosper it's worth it's worth the effort let's go with that and then hedonist trove is just a crazy fun card that people are like wait what's this thing do for seven mana when it etbs exile all cards from target opponent's graveyard you may play land cards exile this way you may cast non-land cards exile it i think it's just a super awesome card especially if you're playing against someone with mill or they've just found a way to put all the stuff they need in their graveyard you say hey i like that i'm gonna take that thanks thank you for your trove and then i mean it's lands who cares play whatever lands you got fetch lands shock lands basics whatever ones you got throw them in there don't forget about the bajuka bogs there's another land if you're like i don't know i'm on card kingdom i need to get to the 35 for free shipping throw like two or three bajuka bogs in there to throw in all your black decks you should always have a copy of this in every black deck you have because they're just good and then all in all treasure vault there's another one that is really good for this deck because it helps us make treasures in a pinch but that's kind of it like there's prosper the whole point exile stuff make treasures find some good synergies with treasures or artifacts going to the graveyard that kind of thing i think prosper is a super fun commander i love this deck i have yet to play a game with it and not have a good time i found ways to just take myself out so my opponent couldn't that's always nice right show them how it's really done <laughs> go out on your own terms and i have i have no doubts that this deck will continue to give us or have new options it's never gonna get stale you're never gonna feel bored playing it it's just a lot of fun you do have to keep track of triggers though maybe that's my biggest warning if you're not good at like tracking multiple things it may be a little bit too complicated I've yet to run into that after the first or second game. I felt really comfortable and just, I just love this deck. Prosper's awesome. There's a reason. They're like one of the top EDH rec search commanders by far. If you haven't built them and you need a Rakdos commander, I would highly recommend them. Check them out and check out Card Kingdom. Use my affiliate link. Would really be appreciated. Help me making content like this. Goes a long way. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next one, my friends. Take it easy. Peace.